can you really snap while wearing the Infinity Gauntlet? With unlimited control over time, space, power, mind, soul, and reality, wielding the Infinity Gauntlet immediately makes you the most dangerous thing in the universe. But what if you had to physically snap in order to exercise this great cosmic power? This is a big bulky thing that doesn't exactly scream hand dexterity. So can you actually snap in an Infinity Gauntlet? We're gonna find out for realsies. <laughs> this works on so many levels. Before we go any further though, this video contains major spoilers for Avengers Infinity War. If you have not seen it yet, it's been over a month, deal with it, we're spoiling it now. At the end of Infinity War, Thanos wins. He succeeds in getting all six Infinity Stones, snaps his fingers, and then half the life in the universe turns to dusty dust. Now, it's hard to tell if Thanos actually physically snaps in the movie, but in the comic that this scene is based on, he obviously does. So let's assume that Thanos indeed snaps like we do. But given it's presumably a metal gauntlet that partially restricts finger movement like real gauntlets do, is this possible? First, let's start with what a snap actually is. So the first thing that most people do to get into snapping position is take their middle finger and their thumb and press them very hard together, but not straight up and down, slightly offset. Because you are pressing straight down with your middle finger, but slightly offset, the forces in a normal snapping position look something like this. You have a normal force pressing up from your thumb into your middle finger, a force pressing down from your middle finger into your thumb, like this, and then you have a frictional force between both fingers that is opposing the sliding motion that your middle finger wants to make. If you balance out all these forces in this position and make them larger as you do so, when you release, the result and snap will be larger. Those are the basic forces involved, but what is actually making the snapping noise? Here are my fingers doing a normal snap. I can identify three possible sources of sound. The first is fingers sliding past each other. The second is your snapping finger hitting your resting finger. And the third is your finger hitting part of your palm. All of these motions act to move air rapidly out of the way in between your fingers, which disturbs the air around them and creates pressure waves that we interpret as sound. Now, if we isolate these potential sources, we should be able to determine what is the most important component of a snap and therefore what the Infinity Gauntlet would have to do to give you that classic sound, what it would need to be able to move like. So let's test this. You don't really need anything complicated. You can even do it with me at home with a simple piece of cloth. If the frictional forces between your middle finger and your thumb are most important, we should be able to cover up our resting finger and our palm with some sound absorbing cloth and snap and get the same sound. Not really, pretty muffled. Well, what if it is the resting finger? Let's take that out of the equation by wrapping it. Okay, closer, but not quite. Well, now let's cover up the palm and leave the resting finger and see what happens then. Still close, so to me, it seems like the majority of the snapping sound comes indeed from hitting your palm and your resting finger and not so much from friction. <laughs> there you go. So to create a genuine snapping sound, the Infinity Gauntlet is gonna need two things. First, it's gonna need the finger articulation necessary to create the snapping position, and then to allow your middle finger to hit your resting finger and your palm. And second, it's gonna need the material with a little bit of give to it so that there's enough surface area to create those tiny pressure waves. But this is just a drawing. How are we gonna actually test this? We are gonna test this question by actually testing it with real gauntlets provided by maybe the single most qualified person to talk about infinity gauntlets on this planet. We just have to escape this void first. Let's go. So I have enlisted the help of Tony Swatton, master blacksmith at the Sword and Stone in lovely Burbank, California. Hey, Tony. How you doing, Kyle? Thank you so much for joining me. Now, I have asked you here today because I want to determine 
if you can snap a real Infinity Gauntlet. And you may be the single most qualified person on the planet to answer that question because you have made an Infinity Gauntlet that is featured in two Marvel films, correct? Well, I made the first uh, Infinity Gauntlet for Thor for the, you know, back in 2009, and that stood almost four feet tall. So, you know, Jeez. obviously you'd have to be a giant and get your hand in there to snap that gauntlet. That's not gonna happen. You can put my whole body in there. <laughs> yeah. Just kind of like, like it's a safety cone or something like that. Yeah. Um, that was repurposed in uh, Thor Ragnarok when Hela walked by and kicked it off the pedestal and goes fake. So in lieu of having the actual Infinity Gauntlet here, which is locked in a Disney vault somewhere until the end of days, you have an assortment of gauntlets here that are, in your opinion, as close as we can get, yeah? Yeah, I think this is gonna be a good representation. All right, so why don't you walk me through some of our selections today? Okay, well, this is uh, what they call a mitten gauntlet. There's no fingers attached to it, so you're not really gonna be able to snap your fingers on that, but I just wanted to show mm, it. We shall see. This one is also a mitten gauntlet, but with a clamshell kind of fitting. And again, there's no real way to get over there to articulate fingers. This one, you may be able to get some use out of it. Again, it's a 14th century gauntlet, a little bit later period. And there's more articulation with the fingers put together like this. Mm -hmm. And then the last two are what they call finger gauntlets from the 16th century that give you more articulation. But because of the leather glove on the inside, you know, you're not gonna get the the connection, the contact to snap your fingers. And then this one. We also have some chain mail. This one we have chain mail on the inside, which is, I think, would negate your actual snap. <laughs> it sounds like sounds like you've already made, have you tried snapping in any of these yourself? I, you know, um, no, I haven't. <laughs> <laughs> well, you, ha you obviously have an opinion. You don't think I'm gonna be able to snap any of these. I, I doubt it, but you know, go for it. Should we get tested? Sure, how do you wanna try? You wanna try the first one here? Yes. So this is the kind of mitten gauntlet with the articulation over the back of the hands and leather gloves on the interior. Ah, oh, yes, ultimate <laughs> power. So this is surprisingly heavy. Well, this one's made out of steel. Everything else is aluminum for film purposes, for actors. <laughs> I don't know what you're getting at. Uh, okay, so let's, let's try this one. Test number one, we're gonna try to snap this gauntlet here. You can see I have, it's leather on the inside, and the Infinity Gauntlet prop did have leather on the inside of it as well, correct? Yeah, there's leather on the inside um, from Thor and uh, from Thor Ragnarok, just over the thumb, but the, the rest was compression articulation. If you're familiar with any of the historical armor, like Henry VIII's armor, was compression articulation inside the armor, uh, the elbow, underneath the armpit, and even had a rump plate. So we had something similar uh, incorporated into the Infinity Gauntlet that had full coverage of metal other than a, a small space in here where you had leather. And even though these gauntlets don't have metal fingertips, this still should give me a pretty good idea of what it'd be like to try to move my hands in these yeah. gauntlets and perform the snap, yeah? Yeah, you should be able to, you know, um, get the action of snapping, but you're not gonna, you know, I don't think you're gonna snap them. Oh, we <laughs> shall see, all right. Now test number one. This gauntlet. <laughs> Here we go. Perfectly balanced, as all things should be. Poof. Ah, it, it hurts my hands. So my hands are, I, I do have some articulation because of the glove here, but I am restricted. Um, by the backing, and the leather material is hard. You, yeah. you can't really get the same kind of contact that you would want on your palm, so it doesn't really sound like a snap. No. All right, Okay. So how about this next cup? Well, this one is made out of aluminum, so a little bit lighter for your uh, comfort. I'm uh, a delicate boy. Uh, this one also, instead of a welding glove on the inside, has a, uh, a deerskin um, kind of work glove, so it's a little bit lighter. So if you'd like to try that, you get it wiggle into that. Ooh. All right, so it looks pretty Awesome, and I do like, I feel quite protected yeah. in this, which I like, but again, you, I, I, I can foresee having the same problems where I have these straps here that are really restricting my movement, and then also the thumb right. being restricted. So, test number two, gauntlet number two. Hmm, perfectly balanced, <laughs> as all things should be. 
See now, I, I think most of the sound there is actually coming from the backing, so if we did like this, like... Eh. Not so much a snap. Not so much a snap as it is just thumping. Yeah. Just hand thumping. All right. Okay. So now moving on to what looks like closer to yep. what we we're talking about. Again, aluminum. Like. This one's kind of interesting. This was built for uh, Ooh, John Cleese for uh, Third Rock from the Sun. And again, a lighter gauntlet on the inside and a little bit more work went into this, so you might have more articulation. Yeah, definitely. I have a lot more <laughs> yeah. finger movement. Okay, so test number three, gauntlet number three. Very pretty. I always mm -hmm. wanted to have spike knuckles. Yeah. <laughs> All right, test number three. Here we go. Perfectly, <laughs> perfectly balanced, as all things should be. Eh? That's not so bad. I think a lot of that is maybe the the knuckles hitting each other rather than the well, actual it's actually, snapping. Well, it's motion. actually the fingertip where your the fingertips are formed here, on in both cases. Mm. Now in uh, the Infinity Gauntlet we built for Thor these fingers are completely encapsulated. So this is a metal like thimble on the end of each finger and then plates articulating over the inside. Um, so that would restrict your movement for snapping. You're hearing that little touch of metal as they connect. That's almost a snap. I mean, it might be effective. Yeah, but then, <laughs> but that's the same as, you know, just. Yeah, Like exactly. that's calling this a snap. Yeah. Right. All right, so I don't know. I'm half Half and half on, the, on this gauntlet, we'll see. All right, next gauntlet. Why don't you tell me a little bit about this one? Well, this one's a uh, little simpler finger gauntlet, 16th century gauntlet, again, articulating plates going over, a lot of movement on the fingers, a uh, little bit on the metatarsal or back of the hand, and again, lined with a uh, deerskin leather glove. So, um, but the glove is going to probably impair your kind of snap ability. Oh, yeah, I can, uh, just with the added the added pieces of metal, you can feel that it's almost directing the way that your fingers can come down right. and come up. And I think from the Infinity Gauntlet prop, it's pretty much the same way where it's, you can kind of just go down. That, yeah, you're not going to get a full, you, can't, you know, you opposable. You can't move sideways in, in, mm -hmm. in what's it. So let's test it. Yeah? Infinity Gauntlet test number four. Gauntlet number four. Mm, perfect. <laughs> I can say it every time. Perfectly balanced, as all things should be. Eh? Uh. Uh. Again, it's, it sounds like I'm getting the metal touching together rather than, it, it, it sounds like other sounds rather than the snapping sound to me. And I think that's because it is leather connecting. There is no direct skin to skin from your fingertips. Right. Hmm. Hmm. Wow, my wrist is starting to hurt. <laughs> Final gauntlet, this one's a little bit different. Why don't you tell me about this one? Uh, this one's a little bit more ornate than the other 16th century gauntlet. Uh, again, lined with leather, as you can probably see around here, uh, but also lined with a um, chainmail butcher's glove. So this is what butchers use so they don't cut their fingers off. And uh, so you would have the, the, the sound of the chainmail rubbing against each other when you try that one on. All right, different kind of gauntlet, different material. I think this is gonna come very close to what we could consider the Infinity Gauntlet to be. You have metal on metal, you have hand articulation that is very directed. And it is, and it is ornate. You still, get, you still get a surprising amount of movement in right. these. Where, you know, it's not well, just having well, your hand like a brick. But I mean, you know, for the purpose of the gauntlet, they work. This is uh, one of the Asgardian swords. If you hold your, open your palm up here, that's no problem to hold this. This is one of the prototype swords from the first Thor movie that the guards used. Oh, I feel so powerful. And again, in aluminum for your comfort. <laughs> Why'd you have to take it away from me? I felt so strong. So, okay, yeah, no, I, and I think unless you've used a gauntlet before, I have used one once, but but it, it some of that added stability, it makes it easier to wield some of these heavier implements yep. that want to bend your wrist or bend your fingers in certain ways. Right. And this gives you a little bit of stability and backing so that you can make some of those <laughs> movements. Take that, ice giants. Here's our final test. I think this might be the closest one to the Infinity Gauntlet that we can get without breaking into Disney. So, final Infinity Gauntlet test, here we go. 
perfectly balanced, as all things should be. <laughs> <laughs> Anticlimactic, <laughs> as movies try not to be. I will fix that in oh, post. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and when you're trying so hard, like it, feel it right in your forearm when you try to do that. <laughs> Yep, I'm not. I'm not getting anything. You know, I, I looking at all these gauntlets. I don't know if any of these can be considered a true snack. No, I don't think we. Uh, you know, I think I was right. <laughs> yes, I, I think you're also right. But since you're the master gauntlet maker, what would have to change about a gauntlet in order to do something like a regular? I think the only way we can make that work is remove the leather chainmail or other pieces that are causing the skin not to touch and do like a, a half gauntlet, maybe something similar to this. Uh, oh, it is a right hand, which will help. And it's, it is purple, which is on theme today, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> which is good. Okay, oh, there we go. Now, okay, now why would you ever have a gauntlet without fingertip protection? Uh, this was made for a, a music video for a guy playing a keyboard. Oh, <laughs> I guess what I'm asking, is there any tactical reason to do this? Uh, you know, for keyboard use. <laughs> hey, <laughs> every metal key. <laughs> yeah. yeah, but you know, it is a purple gauntlet, I mean. It is a purple gauntlet, but what I'm seeing here is even the, the, the finger restriction is still enough so that you can't really get into this comfortable <laughs> motion that you want to try <laughs> snapping in, right? And even if you could, you're still hitting palm on yeah. a different material. Yeah. You're, you're still hitting fingertip on a different material. Right. And even metal on metal, I imagine, isn't gonna sound no, quite it's... the same. Given all that, what is your conclusion, Tony? Do you think you, you are the most qualified person in the world probably <laughs> to answer this question? Can you snap an Infinity Gauntlet? Not as it's built, you know? In my opinion, it's not going to snap. And uh, I wouldn't make it uh, happen because I can't even snap my fingers on my left hand anyway. So and uh, and you made, you made them right. Yeah. So if you can't snap, why would they snap? I don't know. Maybe done in post. So Tony, thank you so much for your time and your experience and your expertise in answering this question. It's time for me to finish my episode. Well, that's great, but uh, hey, there's just a bit about pay. <laughs> Gotta go. So. Could you actually snap in the Infinity Gauntlet like Thanos does? Well, according to our testing and the guy who's actually made MCU canon Infinity Gauntlets, no. No, you could not. The Infinity Gauntlet would need to be made differently and not like a traditional gauntlet in order to accommodate the physics of the finger snap. That means in all the instances where Thanos does snap in the Infinity Gauntlet, he would need to be bending reality in such a way that he could actually do so. And using something as powerful as the Reality Stone to do something as inconsequential as snapping does sound crazy, but maybe that's why they call him the Mad Titan because science. I can already hear what some of you are gonna say, so let me head that off at the pass. Yes, the actual Infinity Gauntlet prop does exist, but it is impossible to get your hands in it. A, the real prop is 48 inches tall, Think about that for a second. It would come up to around here on me from the ground, and B, or two, it is locked inside a Disney vault from now until the end of days. So I, I still think this is the closest you can come uh, without actually, you know, being in a Marvel movie. Thank you so much for watching, Morgan, and thanks again to Tony Swatton. You can check out all of his amazing work at swordandstone.com. He's made real Thor's hammers and real Wolverine claws. He is awesome and very knowledgeable, and if you're in the Burbank area, you can check out Metal Palooza around the time when this video first came out. It sounds like a blast. Also, if you want more of me, go back to nerds.com and check out my Squatch, or go to Project Alpha at projectalpha.com and check out Natural Selection. Yep, it's back and it's still weird. Also, if you are on YouTube, hit that notification bell so you can get all the other nerdy stuff that we do on this channel and like if you are on Facebook to do the same and follow me on Instagram and Twitter as uh, here and also the science because 
that.